So I've opened the document that I referred to in the Adapting the View blog article in, in Multifarious. Um, and in here you can see that I have a number of segments which have been deliberately contrived to show the worst aspects of working in WYSIWYG mode within Studio. So segment three, for example, in there I've got a very complex script. It's similarly in um, this segment down the bottom here, segment 10, which is just so small and um, stylized, you couldn't possibly read it. Well, you might be able to, but I can't read it. If I look at segment four, this is very typical of working with a PowerPoint file where often there is very large text in the slides. And if you're working in WYSIWYG mode, sometimes if there's enough text, it can be so long that you can't even fit the visible segment inside the view in Studio. So then it be just becomes impossible to work with sensibly. Segments five and six, there is text inside those segments, you just can't see it because I colored the text to match the background color of Studio in these particular segments. So one's gray, one's white. And you can see that in segment seven where I've just taken some of the words and done the same thing. In segment eight, that's a, a powder blue. I know it's powder blue because that's the default color of the active segment. And when I click on the active segment, now I can't see the text anymore. So not particularly helpful. Um, I know it might not be likely that somebody ever did that, but it could happen. And I'm showing you some extremes here. And segment nine, of course, here I've colored the text and the background to the text. So there it's very hard to see the text. And there's probably nothing in the individual colorings that I could do to affect that. Um, but we'll see as we look through the settings. So first we're going to look at the font adaptation settings because this is where you make all the changes for this. So I click on File, Options, and then go to Font Adaptation. If you've been there before, when you do this, Studio will open in the font adaptation settings. If I've been somewhere else, for example, like this, and then I click on File, Options, it will remember where you were. And so you have to go back through the editor and down to font adaptation. So that's how you find it. Now, let's try first of all the adapt font sizes. So if I click on this and enable the adapt font sizes, this allows me to change the minimum font size that is used to display the text. It's display only, it tells you this here as well. It has no effect on the final target document. This is only for working. So here I could say, I could leave this at this, for example. I could say, okay, I want the minimum source font size to be 12. I'll put a maximum on here and make it slightly different. So then if there is a, um, a larger font, then I can actually see that it was a larger font. I suppose I could do that, put a bit of a range on it and have 10 to 12. Depends how good my eyes are um, and whether I wanted it to be maybe 14 to 18 or whatever I wanted. And I can also have a, a variant inside the target so if the target language that I was font that I was using which can be set down here created a, a different size so perhaps the default font was much smaller in the target than it so perhaps the default font was much smaller in the target than it is in the source in those cases you could change the sizes to have a different target size so it's very flexible what you can actually do here when I click on OK this immediately changes everything and now what I have is font size settings consistent throughout the file based on the settings that I just applied. So a minimum and a maximum in the source and a slightly bigger minimum and maximum in the target, which you can see um, see here in, with, the, with the text I've actually used and the formatting I've applied. So that was pretty straightforward. What that doesn't address is being able to see any of this text. So let's just go back to here again, back to the options and have a look at this adapt text colors. Now what this does is this applies a contrast between the color of the text and the color of the background um, within Studio. And Studio will do this fairly intelligently based on whatever you do here. So you set how much of a contrast you want. I'll just leave it in the middle. And then Studio will apply that contrast to make sure that you can see the text. So if you keep your eye on segments five and six, when I click on OK, now that I've, I've enabled this, I should be able to see that. So there we go. Now I can actually see that text. Um, it's not set to a particular color. It's just the contrast between the, the, the colors that have been used, which is applied to allow me to see it better. Even in segment seven, where I had multiple, uh, multiple colors. So that was one way to get to those settings. Now, before I go back to them to turn it off, there's an easier way to get to the settings. If I click on the view menu over here on the right, you have this 
font adaptation group. And if you click on that little dinghy there, font adaptation options, it will always take you directly to the font adaptation. And the other thing to note, I'm just going to turn off the adapt text colors and turn off the adapt font sizes. So I'm back to normal. Is that if I click on this button here, this will set the font sizes. It won't set the contrast settings, but it will set the font sizes. That's, I think that's what it actually says, adapt font sizes. So now that it will, it will now take on the settings that are in here, this 10 and 14 and this 16 and 20. And what I can do with these buttons is I can just go up or down and make the text as big or smaller as I like now that it's been controlled by the font adaptation being enabled. So that's pretty smart, pretty neat. But I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to come back to my home menu and let's take a look at another setting uh, which is extremely useful and probably the best way to work in my opinion when you're actually translating which is to click on file options then in the editor view you have this formatting display style this is the default so if I was to reset to defaults you get this and you get all of this kind of um, effect with any document you open if you change this to show all tags but don't but do not show formatting then you should have a consistent font format a consistent font style um, and all of the tags in view all, all the time while you work so i click on ok and that's exactly what i get which is perfect and what i can also do there if that was a little small for me i can still use these font adaptation and change the size of the font so i can make it bigger or smaller through here as i'm working very easily but it's a consistent size and I always see the tags because even if you hide them you still have to apply them and you still have to work with them to avoid tag errors so it makes complete sense to work with them and see them also to work in tag ID mode because then you can make sure you're applying the right ones um, so for here you wouldn't know that this was actually supposed to be bigger text because you're working in it in a, a different format and if you applied whatever is in uh, whatever these four tags that these two tags are for if you apply those instead of the, the um, number three tags you wouldn't notice the difference here but you would in the target document so a very good idea to work in tag ID mode but let's turn that off and I'll come back to my file options I'll reset to defaults so when I do that watch this and you'll see that this changes so if you make a mistake each pane has a reset to defaults and you can always put it back even if you make a mess so I'm back to here again and let's take a look at another option which is using the colors so it's still it's file options and down to colors and what we're interested in is what we can do with some of these things so we mentioned the active segment background color already the powder blue so for example i could change that to be something different i could make it say green and yellow and my active segment will now become green and yellow so when i click on that Actually, you can see the, se the segments are in there, but when I click this time on the blue one that was previously invisible, now I can see it. Actually, that was probably a really bad choice of color with that powder blue, um, but you get the idea. Perhaps we'll just have a quick, uh, quick go at changing it, making it something more sensible. What goes well with the powder blue? Um, I'm not very good with colors. So let's, um, I guess it needs to be a dark color of some kind. Let's try it with a dark blue, that one. So that's a little bit better. Now you can read the text, um, but it won't necessarily be the most sensible way to work anywhere, anywhere in any of the other segments that you're actually working in. And certainly wouldn't help in this particular scenario. So we'll come back to the colors again. And here, um, I'm not gonna reset to defaults this time because I have changed some of the other colors. So I'll just put that back to powder blue, wherever that is powder blue so with the same and I'm going to change the background color and the, and the background and the text color just to give you an idea how it might be better if you didn't like this um, sort of white to black method for working and you wanted it the other way around so if I changed this to show me the window text and this one to show me the window color so the colors are very limited in the background color and text color but it might be enough and when I do that this time I've changed everything to be um, all one color here it can become even more difficult with all these different sizes, but if I was actually working in, um, a quick way to turn everything around, if I was actually working in this mode,
then it becomes much easier to work. Um, and you can change the size of the font, obviously, as you're working to make it bigger or smaller. And so if you were somebody who struggled a little bit with the white to black and black to white um, issues, then being able to change the view in the screen while you work like this could be very useful for you and could save you a lot of eye, uh, quite, or a lot of eye strain. So I'll go back to my options, back to my colors. Um, okay, I'll just remember, I think the only one that, no, I'm, I'm gonna put them back. I'm gonna put them back manually and not use the reset to defaults. Okay, so I've changed something that I liked. So there we go. So I go back to here and also I go back to the editor and in here I'll change this back to where we were, show formatting but hide recognized formatting tags. And here we are back to the beginning again. So there's a number of different ways in which you can change the views that you're working with in Studio, the way you can change the color of the font, the size of the font, whether you show tags, you don't say show tags. It's entirely up to you. And I'd encourage you to have a play with those settings, um, keeping in mind that once you've done it, it's easy to go back to the defaults. So if you totally mess it up while you're playing, you can do that. Um, but do keep in mind that um, once you have set it up, pretty well. I should keep a screenshot somewhere of the settings that you use just in case you reset it sometime or reinstall because there isn't a way to export those settings that you make for any of those things. So it's a good idea to take the screenshots of your settings and then you can easily put them back afterwards. But I hope that was helpful.